He's been picked out. Socks down to his ankle. Picks out Stansfield. That's the hat trick. And that's what dreams are made of. Hello and welcome to Park Life, the official Exeter City podcast. There's been five games since our last episode, so we've got an awful lot to get through today. Luckily, I've got some great guests joining me ahead of Fleetwood on Saturday. Without further ado, let's dive straight into it. Coming up in today's show, I'm joined by City's best statistician, Ben Allen Dahl, better known as XG on Twitter, to get a numerical breakdown of City's season so far. Zach Jules also pops his head in to chat about what went wrong at Lincoln and how he's made that left centre-back position his own in recent months. Finally, Fleetwood fan and League One expert Ben, or Nappers as he likes to be called, gives us a rundown on Fleetwood as they prepare to visit the park on Saturday. First up, I'm joined by City fan Ben Allen Dahl, who you might know from the content he produces over on Twitter after every match. Ben, welcome to Park Life. A pleasure to have you join us. For those who don't know who you are, you're the guy who runs the XG, spelled E-X-E, Twitter account. Uh, and for the past couple of seasons, you've provided us with all sorts of statistical breakdowns for your followers. Just start off by telling me what got you into it and, and why you love the sort of statistical aspect of football. Well, I do maths at university at the moment and statistics is like a big part of my course. It's always something I've enjoyed. And as a huge extra fan myself, I thought, sort of the the two worlds combining yeah it's an amazing idea it's got to be said um not everybody will know what xg is it's a little it's a bit of a modern thing you know there'll be some older fans here who um who maybe haven't heard of the term or, or don't really know what it means so just quickly just sort of explain what xg is and, and why it's important in modern football it's a stat that takes into account lots of different things about a shot and gives it a probability of how likely it is to go in basically so it takes into account speed of the, the cross coming in, uh, the height of the ball, uh, positioning of defenders and goalkeepers. And it all sort of combines to bring a statistic which shows you how likely you were to have scored in a game, basically. I wanted to start off by talking about some of our, our recent games. Um, the form at the moment is inconsistent, which you know might not actually be the insult it sounds like, considering we were on a pretty poor run of consistent form a few months ago. But either way, you never really know what you're going to get with the City side at the moment. No, not at all. It's uh, we're in a strange place at the minute, but the form has definitely taken an upturn, which is obviously good to see. That's probably got a lot to do with Sonny Cox coming in and helping us finish those chances. But yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that against Fleetwood this weekend, we can keep the good form going, get another important win. Yeah, there's been plenty of standouts. You mentioned Sonny Cox, another who's come into the side and, and scored on his debut. Moisa, who uh, had a great game uh, against Wigan, also looks like a really good goal threat, which I suppose is what we needed uh, when you consider the goal scoring struggles that we've been on for, uh, for other season so far. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Isa has so far got an XG for us of 0.21 and he's already got a goal from it. So that's the exact sort of clinical striker we need to get us, you know, going up the league and maybe even thinking about, you know, top half finish if we, if we finish the season strong. Yeah, we can only hope, can't we? Um, last time out, City beaten at, uh, by Lincoln at Sinsill Bank. Disappointing result, which I know Gary wasn't particularly pleased with. I checked the XG and uh, the 1-0 defeat sounds about right from the statistics. Is that the sort of picture you got as well? Yeah, absolutely. It was it was uh, that sort of game, really. From, from memory, I can only recall the Jack Aitchison chance which came at a very important point of the game because I think if that goes in, you know, it sort of sets us up to go in and protect a 1-0 lead away from home. It's our sort of thing. But uh, unfortunately, Keeper made a great save and it wasn't to be. They scored pretty soon afterwards. Yeah, indeed. Um, well, you're talking about Jack Aitchison. So there's only one area that I need to go to now and that's the sort of number of times he's hit the woodwork this season. Incredible stats, really. I don't think any player has, has hit the woodwork more times in League One this season than Jack Aitchison. And no team has hit the woodwork more times than Exeter City. 19 times throughout the season. Incredible, really. I guess that just sort of goes to show how important luck is in football. You can create the chances, but at the end of the day, they need to go the right side of the post. Yeah, exactly that. And I've got a stat here in front of me that Exeter City this season have got 34.5 XG. But obviously, we've only scored 25 goals. So massive underperformance in front of mm. goals so far this season. And I'm assuming hitting the woodwork will be a lot of that. 
Well, I was going to say, what other reasons do you think there could be? Because, um, you know, we've had our chances. We certainly did against Derby, for example, didn't score a goal. So, so what do you think it is that, that means that we're not quite uh, hitting our XG targets? Well, sometimes it's just lack of confidence. And I think a lot of that probably as well would have been earlier in the season when we, you know, scored hardly any goals. This obviously is definitely improving at the moment with Cox and Isa, as we've previously mentioned, but hopefully uh, continues to improve. Yeah, and staying on statistics, one key feature of Gary Colwell's tenure since he joined the club has been his sort of demand for possession-based football. Uh, just four teams have had more control of the ball this season, and perhaps the most blatant example was when we lost to Derby last week, but with a huge 70% possession. Why do you think it is that managers sometimes choose to dominate the ball? And, and I, I guess more personally, why doesn't it always work? Well, I think the theory is if, if you have the ball, the other team can't score. But, Simple uh, as that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But obviously, uh, it's easier said than done. And as Derby showed us, they scored three great goals and they were extremely clinical with the chances they had. Whereas we were on the opposite end of the spectrum and didn't score from quite a few chances. I guess, again, that kind of goes to show that the quality of chances created doesn't always equal goals. And I guess that that's shown in the underperformance in XG. Sometimes yeah. teams just are more clinical in front of goal and, and that can make the difference. Yeah, 100%. And you also have to remember that even XG, all stats have got to be taken with a pinch of salt and don't paint the whole picture. For instance, that Derby game, it sort of felt like we were in charge for a lot of it. Yeah. But obviously they... They scored the goals they needed at the right times as well. But it's one, you know, it's all well and good looking at one end of the pitch, the the goal scoring end of the pitch. Perhaps our player of the season this year has been Vilsina Salo down the other. Uh, at least earlier in the month, I know that he had the highest XG prevented of any goalkeeper in the football league, all the way up to the Premier League. Quite incredible, really. Just how important has he been in, in keeping City away from the relegation zone? Because seven point nine goals apparently he's, he's prevented this season. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's he's been massive and. Um, He's a player I really like as well. He's got proper passion for the club. And in the stats you've just mentioned there, it shows it. And even in the, probably our most important moment of the season so far on Boxing Day, the save against Wickham, that sort of sums him up this season, really. He stepped up to the plate at the time that mattered the most, really. Yeah, he has been fantastic. I guess one of the other sort of defensive players who has been a bit of a standout this season, perhaps gone under the radar a little bit, has been Zach Jules, who's coming on the show just after you, actually. Um, gone a bit under the radar, but consistently been fantastic this season. Uh, one of the best signings um, of, of the year, I guess. Yeah, he's, he's always a 7 out of 10 and sometimes a 9 or 10, so... It's the exact sort of player you want playing in your back line. And he's only gotten better since uh, forming that strong partnership he's got with Diabate at the back. And yeah, hopefully uh, continues to flourish. Yeah, well, I'm sure he will. Um, and then finally, uh, Fleetwood Town at home this coming Saturday. They're a side a little bit below us in the table, but they have picked up a few decent results recently. What are you expecting from this one? Well, if it's the team to score against as they have the worst ex expected goals conceded against in the league. So if we can't create chances against them, we shouldn't be able to create them against anyone. But hopefully <laughs> we manage to get, get the win. And yeah, be interesting to see how uh, Stockley performs against us as he's their top scorer this season as well. I was going to say, he's been in, in decent form recently. You reckon he could come back and haunt, haunt City? Yeah, I've got it down here that he's got six goals this season from 4.85 XG. So he's still got that clinical finishing that he had at Exeter. Uh, he's their top goal scorer this season and he's also their top assister. So, yeah, got to keep him quiet to keep Fleetwood quiet, I think. And a note on Charlie Adam, uh, Fleetwood's new manager, uh, somebody that most people will know for his playing career rather than his managerial career. But he does seem to have, have turned things around a little bit they, they could be quite a, a, a difficult side actually to, to face at this point in the season yeah 100 percent. i'm by no means saying it's going to be an easy game i think they'll uh they'll really offer something and especially under adam as well they've they've significantly improved so hopefully uh the boys can step up and carry on showing the good form Amazing. Well, Ben, you've been fantastic. Just uh, one final chance to, to plug your, your Twitter account and, and the other work you're doing as well. Yeah, guys, go and follow XG Philosophy on Twitter, spelled E-X-E. And uh, yeah, there's uh, some good stats out there. Amazing. Well, th thank you so much, Ben. You've been a pleasure. Uh, and thank you for joining me on Park Life this week. Thanks, Tom. Cheers. 
Next, I'm joined by City defender Zach Jules, who cemented his place in City's back three in recent months. Zach, welcome to Parklife. Great to have you with us. City are battling through a run of pretty inconsistent form at the moment, I think it's fair to say. Some fantastic wins against the likes of Bristol Rovers, Barnsley, Peterborough and Wigan. But that's now been followed up with a couple of defeats to Derby and Lincoln. How do you feel about the recent form? Um, yeah, I think in terms of where we were, obviously at the beginning of the season, we started really, really, really well. And then we seem to have that period of just loss after loss. And um, yeah, it was a bit of a tough time, but coming out of that and, and picking up some some really good results against some really, really good sides as well, to be fair. So to get those results and turn things around and have the table looking a lot easier to look at um, has been good. Obviously, the the last two results weren't so great. I think the 3-0 loss to Derby, obviously the scoreline is, isn't great, but the, the game as a whole and how, how the team performed, I think that was, there was still some some positive emotions after the game, to be fair, compared to Lincoln away with the 1-0 loss. Um, it had a lot more of a negative feel because the, the performance levels weren't anywhere near what we expect as players and obviously as a, as a management staff and the fans as well, really, especially the ones that travelled all that way yeah it was disappointing but it's nothing that that me or the or the guys are, are worried about let's just focus in on that lincoln game then a one nil defeat at sincere bank um not a brilliant performance i think you'll probably be the first to admit that i think gary said in his post-match interview that it didn't really feel like an extra city performance what do you think he meant by that i think in the sense of we're a team that especially the way we start games we we get into teams faces and we kind of win the battle first off the ball before we, we play the nice stuff that we try and play against Lincoln, I just feel like that wasn't the case at all. It was it was a, it was a total opposite. I felt like we didn't we didn't win enough enough duels, enough 50-50s. I feel like we were second to a lot of things. I think there was quite a few of us that looked maybe a little bit tired, a little bit lethargic, which I guess can be a little bit understandable with, with the amount of games that we've been playing and the fixtures being so congested and stuff. But yeah, I think in in terms of that, I think that's probably what he's talking about. So yeah, it's just a case of going back to basics. What um what the team is is kind of built around in terms of getting in teams' faces, starting fast with an intensity, and then allowing ourselves the time once we once you win that battle to to play the football that we want to play. Yeah, I mean, it is worth noting that we've put ourselves in a really good position considering where we were after the Reading game at the start of the year, which I know you did the post match for and. We're pretty sincere in what you said, um, just saying that we need to start winning games and we have won games. Um, do you feel the pressure is off a little bit now that we're sort of climbing the table? We're up to 14th at the moment, getting a little bit further away from the relegation zone. Does it feel like the pressure is off a little bit? I think in terms of when you look at the table, you have a bit of a, a nicer feeling when doing so. But we we also know that football changes so quickly. The same way that when we were going through the bad period, everyone thought it was it was a crisis and we were doomed for relegation. Which is it's football is like as a fan base, you're you're gonna feel that way because you're gonna speak and view things with with more emotion because you're so invested in the football club and stuff. Whereas obviously we have a job to do and we we know how football can work. And then obviously going into the into the good good turn of form that we had, where we picked up results and we've we've risen up the table and all of a sudden the mood around the place is, is great again. So yeah, it's just a case of not getting sucked into to, to either emotion in terms of feeling like we're doomed and we're not good enough and the results aren't coming. And also when things are going well, thinking that it's all, it's all, it's all well and rosy and we're totally fine because, because we're not. There's so many games that need to be played. There's 12 more games on the fixture list that, that need to be completed. So which is... A positive in the sense of we want to finish as high in the table as possible so we get as many positive results out of the remaining 12 we can finish in a in a very respectable position but on the flip side is it's a case of if we don't pick up the results that that we feel we we require then um we can also finish a, in a position in the table that that isn't so great so it's just a case of keeping on it ticking the games off game by game and trying to grind out results Let's talk about your season so far. You joined the club in the summer after relegation with, with MK Dons. You know, you probably don't need reminding. Yeah. Um, but at a time where I think many might have thought that you would struggle to force your way into the back three. Um, but right from the off, you've been playing regularly. I suppose you started off at that sort of wing back position, but come into the defence quite seamlessly, really. And now one of the first names on the team sheet with many fans, I'm sure you've seen, naming you as like our player of the season so far or one of them. You must be really pleased with your progress uh, since you joined the club. 
Yeah, I think the start of the the start of the season was um I feel like for myself was a little bit a little bit slow. I don't feel like I was I was really showing what I was really about. Plus it being a little bit more difficult playing out of position, that kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to express yourself and, and, and show your qualities and attributes. But yeah, I feel like as the season's gone on, I've kind of I've picked up confidence, I've picked up fitness levels. I think that was a that was a major thing for me. I missed a little chunk of preseason, which I think hindered me in terms of my fitness levels. I think I was kind of playing catch up at the beginning of the season. But yeah, I just feel like having a manager that believes in you and that is going to play you, obviously, unless I have a complete shocker, which um, like fortunately I haven't quite had yet. But um, as long as the performance levels are are to a standard, he's gonna he's gonna continue putting his trust in me and um yeah that kind of gives me the confidence and, and 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 the belief to to just go out there and play my football and just know that I can improve game by game unfortunately I feel like that has been the case even at wing back I feel like I was getting better and better as the games were going by and then just before the second half of the season having to slot into left side of center half which is my natural position. It's been a smooth transition. It's kind of showed that I'm, I have some level of versatility in my game, which is which obviously gives the manager an easier job if there's issues with the squad in terms of players getting injured and whatnot. A change of systems, but yeah, overall, I think I've been I've been really pleased. And I think mainly the most important thing is staying fit and healthy. Touch wood. We've got 12 games left, but I think that's a that's a massive achievement in itself to to make myself available for for so many games in the season. I think that's um. That is a, a bit of an achievement, yeah. Yeah, and you've started 31 games this uh, this season, uh, which is incredible. And, you know, haven't come off the bench in, in any, which is remarkable, really. Did you expect to play as many times as you have done this season? Yeah, I told Gary I'm not signing if I don't play. No, <laughs> no I'm joking. I'm joking. No, it's, um, yeah, I think as a player, you always aspire to, to play every single week. But as you know, there's more than 11 players in the squad. You have like 24 players, some obviously... Sometimes you have more, so there's so much competition. The likelihood of you playing every single week is is very, very difficult, very, very slim in terms of chances. So I aspired to play a lot of football this season, but I also knew that that was down to that was going to be performance based. And if it was if it was me doing the business, that's partly the reason why I was so keen to to sign for the manager here because I knew it was literally going to be on merit if I was if I was doing the business on pitch and I was performing to a level that he was happy with it was never going to be a case of him taking me out of the team for for no real reason so I didn't think I was going to play as many games back to back to be honest with you I would like to say I, I hoped and I aspired to but the fact that I have yeah I'm quite pleased I suppose you've really settled into the Exeter City team this season and obviously making all those appearances is a big part of that but I guess over your career you've never really settled at one club the longest you spent at any club is uh well after leaving the Reading Academy at least is the 18 months you spent at Walsall and MK Dons do you feel like you have found a more permanent home in Exeter now yeah I think so I think as I was saying before I think when you when you have a manager that doesn't run politics and sometimes there's outside noise that kind of affects team selection some clubs clubs are run differently sometimes you have people in higher places in the football club that that make some some major decisions which is uh which can be a bit frustrating as a, as a player sometimes um and it's all opinion based at the end of the day sometimes you can have a manager that that really likes you but you have um a boardroom that has the power to to make decisions and that feel differently um but yeah it's exeter is not not that type of football club i know as i was saying before the manager which i'm grateful for has put a lot of trust in me and i think it's definitely a case of if you're doing well enough here then you're going to be given a chance and that, that goes right down to the academy boys if the academy boys are are doing the business and they're they're training to a very good standard in training they're going to get given an opportunity you just have to look at sonny cox he's um he got given a little bit of, of an opportunity at the beginning of the season ended up being sent out on loan and the, the staff felt that it was it was the right time to bring him back in and, and see what he can do. And I think he's done terrifically. So I think that kind of sums up what, what the football club is about and can't really speak highly enough. Yeah, well, that's that's certainly great to hear. Uh, let's move on to Saturday then. Uh, Fleetwood Town await us at the park uh, and they're a side that you know very well, having played for them a couple of seasons back. Um, they're a team that have changed pretty significantly since you were last there. In fact, I'm, I'm not sure if there are any players that are still there. Um, when you were at, at high point. yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think so. Yeah, no. Are you still looking forward to welcoming them back? I'm sure you recognise a few fans. 
Yeah, um, the fans were great when I was when I was there. A, a great group of, of of fans. It's always it's always a tough place to or a tough team to play against. They 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 never seem to make it easy. I can't recall having a game at Highbury or a game against Fleetwood in general. That's that was kind of a walk in a park. So I know I know first hand it's going to be be a really difficult game. I would love to see them stay up and and retain their League One status. I know it's going to be quite quite a task for them, but ultimately. I want us to to get three, get the three points and and achieve our targets as well. So yeah, I, I do wish them all the best. I hope I hope they manage to find some form and get their their job done. But hopefully that's after we play them on Saturday. Yeah, I mean they've changed a lot from 2022 when you were there. They've also changed a lot from the start of the season. Uh, Charlie Adam has obviously taken over the reins at Highbury in recent weeks and months. They're a side that have improved a lot uh, and they're fighting for their lives. So you must be expecting a pretty tough game. Yeah, it will be. It'll be it'll be a, a massive battle. And yeah, as I as I touched on before, we need to go out there on on Saturday and and first and foremost win the 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 physical battle on the pitch before we can we can play the football that we want to play. Um I feel like they're quite a physical side. They have uh, Stockley up front who's who's a big target man and is and is a big threat from from crossing positions and in and around the eighteen yard box, six yard box he's he's a, a massive threat. So yeah they do they do have quality all over the pitch, which obviously doesn't reflect on the on the position they are in the league. But obviously as I know there's there's other factors that that can contribute towards that and one of those is is confidence and when you're not winning games so yeah we need to we need to start like a house on fire and hopefully get a leg up on them and and, uh, and see the game through and and hopefully get a comfortable result well let's hope so and uh, i know the players are, are looking forward to it zach thank you so much for joining me on park life this week and best of luck on saturday thank you so much thanks for having me finally we get the lowdown on the cold arm Finally, we get the lowdown on the Cod Army from Fleetwood Town fan and League One expert Ben, or Nappers as he likes to be called. Ben, welcome to Park Life. Thanks for joining us. Fleetwood Town have had an incredibly turbulent season so far. Three permanent managers sitting 23rd in League One, but there have been some signs of improvement. How are you feeling about the current situation? I'm exhausted just hearing about that. <laughs> Three managers and um yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot's happened. Scott Brown started at the start of the season after doing a, a relatively okay job, to be honest with you, last season. I think we finished 13th and never in January we were, we were down there. But after that, the January transfer window helped and we looked comfortable. Went on a little run like you've done, you know, recently as well. I think we won, you know, four or five in a row and that kind of kept us into a mid-table finish and uh, but then obviously got potted after six games one draw but in those six games you got to remember we played I think we played Charlton away played Derby away um, and there was some you know Bolton away then there was Shrewsbury um, Carlisle in there as well so you know he lost his job Lee Johnson came in and it, they looked to start well and um, we went on a good run and then as Lee Johnson does, streaky Lee, went on a kind of a period of about eight games. I think we lost six, drew two, something like that. And then, you know, I ended up losing his job. It, it was a weird one because we drew at Portsmouth on the Saturday. We drew against Carlisle on the Tuesday on Boxing Day. Friday, we lost at home to Bolton. And this next Saturday, you get sacked. A week after, you get the point away at Fratton Park. So, again, it felt bizarre, but it felt like he lost a changing room. And Charlie Adams come in and took us back to basics. Plays fighting, plays working hard, you know, just, just giving everything. He's tweaked a few things tactically and we look a lot better. We're pressing, we're using more energy, we're getting bodies into the box, being more positive. But the the mindset and the bare minimum that you want in League One from a team like Fleetwood or Extra or Carlisle that you know is going to be in the bottom eight, the bottom ten, you need a good mindset. And we didn't have that on the Johnson or even under Brown. So that's one, one thing Charlie Adams brought in. And uh, I think since he's come into the football club, I think we'd be I think we'd be about sixth or seventh from bottom, which shows improvement. And I'm now looking at games that we've not won or not kind of got the point we deserve, thinking Wickham away should have had another two points. We're tuning up with 10 men. I'm thinking um, recently as well, we played Lincoln. We had 10 men just before the went one up. I think maybe even get a point there. That's three points. Came through because even the last minute, it's an extra point, four. Um, and, there's, you know, Saturday, I think we deserve a point. So I, I realistically think since Charlie Adams coming into the building, we should be pretty much two points adrift or even level on points with uh, the teams out there. So huge improvements, still a lot of work to be done and uh, we're going to have to be pretty much perfect till now to the end of the season if we're going to retain our League One status. 
Yeah, well, I mean, absolutely, you certainly will do. Um, three managers then, and all three permanent managers appointed before Christmas. It's quite incredible. Um, it's very rare that that sort of thing happens where you've got three managers or two managers who get sacked in quick succession and then a third is appointed all before Christmas. It was pretty chaotic at the start of the season. Do you think that sacking both Scott Brown and Lee Johnson was the right thing to do at the time? Because from an outsider's perspective, it looked like things were pretty chaotic. At the time, okay. So Scott Brown, yes. I didn't like the style of play under Scott Brown. Uh, but again, be careful what you wish for. Then you look at five games late and you're thinking, it wasn't Scott Brown. Um, and then I kind of thought, well, if he got two or three more games, would we have improved? I think maybe 10 games. I think, I think after that, we had, the, we had a two-week period. And I always said it was the first international break of the season. I always said if we played Blackpool that next Saturday, we wouldn't have sat like Scott Brown. No, 100% we wouldn't have. We only did it because of the international break. Um, and that kind of maybe changed our season, like that little thing. Um, so I think at the time, yes, but looking back, probably not. Lee Johnson, I was fuming with we were sacking him. But from what you're hearing on the training ground, if the players aren't going to like him or play for him, you know, as a fan, it doesn't matter what you think, it's what the players are doing. Um, I think what Lee Johnson did, he basically called out the players and said what they want to do with them a bit too early. And he kept saying, we need to get through to January. And if you're a player hearing that, you don't want to hear that. You want to hear you being spoken positively about, even when you're doing badly. And, you know, look, you need criticism in your life, especially as a footballer. But when you're already feeling low for losing games of football, you need to pick me up sometimes. And maybe man management wasn't Lee Johnson's style at, at this football club. So I was a bit disappointed. And when, obviously, Charlie Adam came in, I was one of the relevant ones relatively not bothered because I kind of relatively thought, well, we're going down. Let's go down with a fight. And everything that I've wanted to do in this first kind of six weeks that he's had in the building, which feels like a lifetime ago, these six weeks, but he feels like he's been our manager for six years, never mind six weeks. Um, he said when he first came, Charlie Adam, he said, I want to have a team that represents the town. And I, I see that. I see a hard working team fighting for balls, trying to score goals. And if we lose, still going to the very end. If we go one, they'll down, get the ball, keep going. If we go two, they'll down, get the ball. And it's just little mistakes. And unfortunately, teams picking up from our mistakes. And uh, you know, as a manager, you, you can't kind of resolute for mistakes. So uh, again, it's been a weird season, but probably happy with the Brown, unhappy with Johnson and happy with the, the Charlie Adam appointment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, interesting. Um, Let's focus in on, on Charlie Adam a little bit more then, because I, I think it's a really interesting appointment. People will know him more for his playing career than, you know, his, his short managerial career so far. Um, but it seems to be an interesting appointment to me. After Scott Brown and Lee Johnson left the club, the latter after just a few months, I think if we're being honest, many saw the Fleetwood job as a pretty unattractive one. At the time, you were bottom of League One, with little hope really of getting out of that position. But Charlie Adam did see something different. Uh, what do you think that was? Um, I think that Charlie saw an opportunity. Um, he'd been at, in a lot of Fleetwood games in the past. His sons are in the academy. He actually lives about a mile away from where I live, um, which is about half an hour from the club's training grounds, half an hour from the stadium. Um, you know, I think it's less than what six miles in, in a car. Um, which again for him, he wanted to be a football manager. He knows the club. He's watched a lot of the club. Um, he's brought through young, hungry players. Well, Flick was more always to bring players through and sell them on for big amounts of money, and I think that attracts him. And it's a, an opportunity for him to, to have his foot at a League One football club in the third tier, at a local club, which is his home. This area is his home, and that he said before as well. So I kind of thought, I think he saw it as an opportunity to get into the game. And look, I know we've only won two games, I think in nine or two games in 10 under his leadership. But in every game, I could say a positive thing about, there's obviously negatives in there as well that he's going to learn from. Uh, I think the Wickham and the, the Lincoln game, we've gone down to 10 men, but we're down to 10 men. Um, your manager's going to make mistakes, but I think relatively speaking, first nine or 10 games, I think that, you know, it, he either taken what he's done in these first two two months, I, I, I believe, so when he walked through the door, you know, 50 odd days ago. Yeah, well, I mean, it seems like he's done a really good job. But at the same time, it's not all sunshine and, and rainbows. You still sit 23rd in League One, seven points away from safety, and you haven't won in three games. Do you think that momentum is dwindling a little bit now? No, not really, because I think the first five games under him, we lost. So, you know, and then obviously we bounced back with a good point away at Wickham. That was a really good point. Although we should have won the game, we played really well. And for that 45 minutes, we had a man sent off on 45 plus one. Uh, and he scored a goal promise. We should have been four up. We were really good, you know, electric. And we won our next two. Um, and then Lincoln were winning and getting man sent off. So that 
doesn't help you. The Reading game, we looked tired and we got a point in the last minute. So again, that momentum. And then we played Barnsley. So like, and we played really well. So it should have won, in my opinion, could have won the game minimum drawn it. So I kind of think the performances have still been there. I still probably think in those last three games, although we've only got one point out of it, we should have been looking to realistically get four from our performances minimum in my eyes. But that's been the story of our season where we don't get the points we deserve sometimes. And a lot of times this season, we've been awful. We deserve to be where we are. But under Adam, I don't think we deserve to be in the bottom four at this current moment in time. But our previous 25 games have done that to us. So I don't think the momentum has gone, but winning games of football, that's all that matters. And these next two games, shows that Exeter and Port Blair and Wigan after that as the third game, it's make or break. And we'll know a lot about our season in um, you know nine days' time. Yeah, I mean, that really could make the difference, couldn't it? Those, those three big games. And you know, at this point, when you're in the position you're in now, I suppose every... You know, the next game is the biggest all the time. Um, but your away form this season has actually been quite impressive, you know, relatively speaking. You've got just as many wins and draws away from Highbury as you have losses. What do you think it is that makes Fleetwood quite a hard team to beat away from home? I think because we look so good on the counter-attack, we look quick. We've got a good front three in Cochrane, Stockley and Promise, who Stockley will hold the ball up or bring and flick it on and Cochrane and Promise will run in behind and that's pays when teams are going at us. Um, at home, we've been a joke this year. I think we've lost 11 games. I think the most we've ever lost at home in one season is 13. Well, with six home games to go, I think we're going to lose another two or three minimum. Um, realistically, the games we've got left, we need to win, I think, four of our next six at home to stand any chance of, of doing anything. But no, away from home, we, we, we look to try to hit teams on the count and use our pace and sit in and sit deep. And uh, I think that's why we've been a bit better away. But you say that we've not won away on a Saturday for 13 matches. We've not won... I think we've lost set, lost seven, drawn six. We've not won away on a Saturday since the end of April, which is Accrington last season. So um, our wins have come on Tuesday nights. And against teams you probably expect us to to get if we're going to, you know, Reading away last minute, um, Cheltenham away when the it was the first game under Daryl Clark, so before they came in. And then the Bristol one was a bit of a shot, but they've got nothing to play for. Um, so again, I think we, we, we're long overdue a win on Saturday and that needs to come sooner rather than later. Yeah, well, I, th- I think you're right. Um, but, I mean, you mentioned your, your pretty abysmal home form. It's quite incredible then that you managed to beat us 3-0 um, at your place earlier in the season. I think Kevin Nicholson, our assistant manager, said you smashed us uh, when we visited Highbury last year. Do you take a bit of confidence going into Saturday based on, on that result? A lot's changed. Obviously, you've got players back you know, into the building, new players, players back fit. And you were going through a tough period. That was a period where you lost eight out of nine. Obviously, the, the one all draw with Lincoln, I think it was in there, that it was the only draw. And I actually looked before that game. I remember looking before the game and looking, well, what's changed? You expected goals has done, expected shots on target were, were similar, but they were just going against you, that you're maybe getting away with it in the season when you know, the sun's out, you're top of the table and, you know, it, you know things are going a bit rosier for you. So, again, you just looked... Boy, the confidence. Now you've got a few wins, you look a different prospect. Uh, but Fleetwood, I think, and Exeter aren't too similar in terms of, of squads or, 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 or talent in the squad. But what you can do, you can grit a result at and that we've not been able to do this year. And that, obviously, I, I, I'm not looking forward to Saturday because we see we need to win in Exeter. We'll have no pressure. So we've got to come out and go for the win. None of this. A point will be a good result. So we need to start winning games of football. So uh, I think it's going to be a totally different game come, uh, come Saturday. New manager as well. Three months, eh? So it's a long time in football. Yeah, well, certainly. One player who's going to be coming back to face his former club on yes. Saturday is your striker, Jaden Stockley. You mentioned him a little bit earlier. He's bagged six goals this season, got four assists to his name as well. Do you think he can come back and, and maybe cause some problems for City? Um, he's a good he's a good striker and he gets a lot of hatred from our fans and I don't understand why sometimes. I think since Charlie's come in, I think he scored four, got two assists in his last eight or so games. What he is good, he's good with, where he needs pace around him, like your Cochlands and your Promise, that he can flick the ball onto. He can't run and jump at the same time sometimes. That's what I've noticed, that he either can, he can run well, he can jump well, but not the two at the same point. And then when he's been on his own up front or with a Mary, it just doesn't quite work because he needs pace around him that he can flick on, flick on where sometimes he can't hold it and then bring others into play the best at times. He does his best and he's still good at it, but um, that's why he's so dangerous when you've got others around him that he's been you know, so effective. So I, I, I hopefully that he can come back. He, 
he's a big player for us. He's a huge player for us. He, he obviously he struggled with injuries this season, but since he's come back in under Charlie Adam, I'd, I'd honestly go too far and say he's probably been in the top three best players since um, Charlie Adams come into the football club. Let's move on to Saturday then. And I know that you mentioned just a little bit earlier, you said you weren't looking forward to visiting SJP on Saturday. Why do you think that is? And what kind of game are you expecting um, from your visit to St. James Park? A tough one, you know, you know the, the big cop behind the goal obviously will be rocking and especially if we go a goal up, you just know difficult moments are going to come and you've got to drive through the storm and uh, you know, Exeter have improved lately and if we can get the first goal, we'll stand a big chance. I know if Exeter don't win games of football, they don't like scoring I, 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 of recent, you know, your derbies and uh, your Lincolns, those types of games as well. Uh, but they're, they're dangerous, they can score goals and they can really, you know, make you look very average. So it's one of those types of games that we're coming into your state Stadium and hopefully that we're going to uh, you know nick this you know nick, you know nick some points. But again, you're one of the teams that we're trying to catch with, with respect as well. And you'll be thinking, well, if we can get three points, we can relegate a rival. Realistically, I think if we lose Saturday, we are done, and that will be it. Um, so I kind of think that you'll be thinking, well, there's two done. Now we need to finish above two more. And uh, for extra, I'll be. I think you'd have taken this at the start of the year. Obviously, you started well, went an awful run, and then come good. So um, yeah, I, as a, as a place and as a football club, I think it's a you know a good football club, good people around the football club. Obviously, like yourself, and you know they they've got a good team, good good management staff as well. Uh, but uh, as an away day, I think you've got it perfectly worth think, people thinking, oh, extra away, that's going to be tough. And that's where you want to, whereas at Fleetwood at the moment, it's like, Fleetwood away, it's a good day, good laugh that because everyone's taking three points away at the moment and you don't want your ground to be like that. So uh, I think that gives every credit to extra at this moment in time that, although well, you've not been great at home, but like I said, the world are like, I'm still thinking, oh, this is going to be tough. Maybe down to Fleetwood, but down to extra as well. Yeah, interesting. Well, you know, big shout from you, uh, you know, lose on Saturday and you're done. I'm not so sure. We'll see. Obviously, you mentioned the the two other games coming up. I think you said Port Vale and Wigan. They could be yeah. crucial as well. But we'll we'll have to wait and see. Ben, you've been fantastic. Where, where can our listeners uh, find you? Uh, a little bit more of your voice. Cod Vlogs, um, C O D S V L O G S. I do League One stuff as well. League One content over there as well. Live streams to the match day vlogs, and I have a podcast called the League One Podcast as well. Um, that we talk all things, obviously Exeter and League One as well. So. Uh, Fans coming over there and joining us. That'll be appreciated. Over 13,000 members now and uh, you know, growing by the day. So again, thank you for having me on and uh, it's been good to talk to you. Yeah, pretty impressive. Thank you so much, Ben. And uh, best of luck for the rest of the season. Cheers, mate. Before we go, City's game against Fleetwood this weekend is our dedicated Alzheimer's Society match. Every year, over 60,000 people in the UK die from dementia, making it the number one cause of death amongst people in the UK. Yet many don't know much about the disease at all. So to help raise awareness of the issue, City fan Matt Young shared his own experience of dealing with his father's dementia. My dad has vascular dementia and has been also diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Now the toughest part of this is watching the person you've known all your life slow down. That's been the biggest thing for me. It's not just the memory stuff, it's how much he's physically slowed down. Uh, He definitely looks like an old man these days. He can no longer travel. He used to travel the world with his wife, but uh, that has been cut short and that was one of his passions to go and see as much of this planet as possible. And with his frailty, um, he now has the occasional fall. And unfortunately, at 88 years old, some of those falls can be more serious than others. I guess the thing that most people know about dementia and Alzheimer's is that people lose their memories and although my father still knows who I am and who his wife is he has begun to forget who his grandchildren are and that is tough in fact that's heartbreaking my stepmom is amazing she's 82 years old herself still going strong and has become my dad's full-time carer that's the man she loves she's been married to him for 30 years and she'll be by his side until the day he dies but uh, it's changed her relationship with him it's very very difficult for her Uh, She writes whiteboard notes, she leaves notes on the front of the fridge, but uh, Dad even forgets to read those, of course, so it does become trickier and trickier. She gets a lot of support, I try and go there as much as I can, unfortunately they do live 200 miles away, but uh, I go up there and I give my stepmom the weekend off, but fortunately she gets supported by people like Age UK as well. They've got someone who comes around the house a couple of times a week, and either my stepmom can go food shopping, go and have lunch with a friend, play a game of bridge. And that's the sort of stuff that she needs to keep her going. 
I think the most difficult part of dementia is losing the person you love mentally before you lose them physically. That is tough to watch. So the football club are there to support you. If you have a loved one that you want to bring to the football, if you uh, want to continue to do that stuff and you know that they love it too, then the club are here to support you and your loved ones uh, if they are suffering from dementia. So eloquently put by Matt, and thanks to him for sharing his experience. For more information on the disease and to find out where you can get help, visit the Alzheimer's Society website on www.alzheimers.org.uk. You can also visit the Age UK Devon website where you can get the help and support you need on ageuk.org.uk forward slash Devon. That's all for this episode of Park Life, the official Exeter City podcast. Let us know what you want to hear more of via our social media channels and don't forget to hit the follow button so you never miss an episode. Thanks for listening. Up the city. He's been picked out. Socks down to his angle. Picks out Stansville. That's the hat trick. And that's what dreams are made of.